I know. I know. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Keep in mind, this worked for the Bruins game. You ready? Here we go. It did it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let's go, Panthers. Let's go, Panthers. Let's go, Panthers. Let's go. How we doing? So, uh, everybody's still sick and hurt, or hurt and sick, or whatever the hell's wrong with everybody. They're all still out. Gudis is still out. Lundell is skating. Might be able to come back tomorrow. And Spencer Knight is not the backup today, but might start tomorrow. I think translated, that means if we don't get two points today, and we absolutely have to have them tomorrow, Spencer will suddenly have a quick recuperation. Uh, I don't know. Look, we already heard that Barkoff was sick, came back, got sick again. Stu had a relapse. I had a relapse. Whatever this bug that's going around, seems people have relapses. So, Spencer, um, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're better. Other than that, we're going to see the same lineup that we've been seeing, uh, which worked out fine for us last game. I'm not going to say it's a must win. The last game against the Red Wings was an absolute must win. This is a must two points. If this, if this somehow goes to overtime and we can get the two points, fine. I'm not so worried about chasing Tampa, although we are technically chasing Tampa. I'm more concerned with just making sure we get that eighth seed. Don't care if it's the eighth seed, all right? Six would be nice, but six of one half dozen of another. We have to have a good showing today, and that's the main thing. I want full 60 minutes, all right? No goofing around. Stay out of the freaking box. Please, please, please stay out of the box. It's the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're just not going to figure out how to stop their power play, all right? They're going to get a goal out of every three power plays that they get against us if we're lucky to hold them to that. So stay the hell out of the box. Give me two points. Alright, so it's one nothing Tampa after one. Uh, we looked really, really good for about the first seven minutes, maybe eight. And then Tampa woke up and they're just carrying the play. We cannot get out of the zone. We can't get into the zone. It's bad. We are lucky to be down one nothing. And Bally's has the sound going, which is good because they lost their graphics. So the last half of their first period, I'm trying to call the game on the live stream. I can't tell you how much time is left in the power play. We had the five on, or we had a four on three in the whole thing. And, and they poor Goldie's like trying to tell everybody that, you know, how much time is left. So at least the sound is working. I've never seen a television broadcast so full of just problem after problem after problem. Never seen anything like it. Um... We don't look good. We, Tampa Bay is just skating circles around us. They are beating us to every single puck. Of course, it had to be Pat Maroon just being left alone wide open in the front of the net. Now, I saw Ekblad was there. Not sure if that was his man or if it was the forward. But Maroon just kind of snuck in and, you know, was point blank on Bob. Bob has looked good. I'm not going to praise him too much because you know what happens when I do. But if it wasn't for a few nice saves... It'd be 3 nothing. I would like to see him control some of those rebounds a little bit better because some of the puck control that Tampa has had is Bob is letting out some big juicy rebounds and then Tampa is just first to the puck. Um, if, if we continue playing like this, it's going to be a long afternoon. All right, so tied at one after one. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, we definitely look better that period, except for when we had the power play. Um, coach is still insisting on having it being Montour and Ekblad on that first unit. I don't know why we won't give Forsling an opportunity out there. Forsling Mahura is the second pair. I realize that we're missing Gudis, but Ekblad is just not, he's just not playing well whatsoever. Um, 
Another complaint about the power plays, we had Colin White out there, and I realized we're short guys. We don't have Lundell. That's fine, but two giveaways. Well, not giveaways. He lost the puck twice behind the net, and it just reminded me that, you know, with all the talk about, you know, losing Uyghur and losing Huberto and Ekblad not playing well and, and, and all of that, we miss Mason Marchment, man. In a game like this, this is the kind of game where he would score some big goals for us because a lot of this action is just up against the boards, all right, a lot of puck battles, and we're not winning a whole lot of them. We're winning a few, but not a lot. And there was just a sequence where Colin White lost like two or three board battles in a row, and it made me miss Mason Marchment, man. So, yeah, kind of a forgotten man. We all talk about how everybody else is doing, but that tenacity, like somebody said on the stream, um, we're just lacking that a little bit. That said, have an opportunity to win this game. We have an opportunity to get two points. We're going to need Bob to be stone cold good, though. It's amazing. It is amazing um, how the same exact movie continues to play every time the Panthers play the Lightning. We, we, we come out strong and fast and we're buzzing around. Can't beat Vasilevsky. Suddenly, next thing you know, it's one nothing. Maybe we come back, maybe we don't. And then all of a sudden, Tampa just decides, hey, why don't we actually um, put this game away now? And they just put us to sleep over and over and over again. And had a hell of a good stream, had a lot of people there, over 50 people there. And, you know, we're all talking about it. And the overwhelming general consensus is that we have a coaching problem, which that's really depressing because I don't think Zito's, you know, I don't think Maurice going anywhere. I don't think Zito's going to make that call. Now we do have personnel problems. Okay, we we I mean our third line tonight was Stahl with Cousins and Colin White, and um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And while we do have some personnel issues, you know, Gudis. Duke, Lundell, uh, clearly Ekblad. I don't know what to make of Aaron Ekblad. Um, I, he's got to still be hurt. When I say he's got to still be hurt, it's because is it possible that the that that he just like became that bad that fast? He's got to be hurt. He's a massive liability out there on the ice. He can't skate. He can't move. He's got to still be hurt. But I don't understand that because we were playing really well defensively while he was out. Why rush him back? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So on one hand, I, I, I can't make it make sense either way. I've never seen a hockey player deteriorate that fast if that's all deterioration, if he's still hurt, why is he out there? None of that makes sense to me. Um, the, the top line was absolutely invisible tonight with Bennett, Kachuk, and Verhege. They had a couple of sequences, right? The one goal we did get well, goes off of the defenseman, goes off of Vasilevsky, skate, and into the net. That's the only thing we even came close. The only thing we even came close to getting a goal. I think we maybe had 20 shots. Tampa Bay was doing their thing, shot blocking, and the 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 number of problems with this team is just astronomical. And we win, we lose. We win, we lose. We win, we lose. Now we had one three out of four, but now it's. Three out of five, which is just barely 500, right? Let, let's let's be honest. And the two, you know, the wins were by a big margin. The losses have been by a big margin. It's absolute Jekyll and Hyde Franken team. It's 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 scary because if it is coaching, like many of us are beginning to feel, um, you're going to see this the rest of this year, and at least into next season, right? I mean, Zito's not going to. 
right? And it wouldn't even be Zito. The only way Maurice gets fired is if Vinny picks up the phone and calls Bill and says, hey, look, uh, this ain't cutting it, right? But unless unless Trotz is, is itching at it to come, who, right? So you got that problem. Um, the problem wasn't, you know, Bob was fine tonight. I know you're going to see four goals up there and think, what the hell? It wasn't his fault. The last goal was a 2 on none. The 2 on none. Right? Somebody got beat. I couldn't see who it was. Somebody got beat um, about center ice. And I couldn't tell if it was five or six, to be honest with you. I was trying to watch the replay. Whoever it was, was had turned around and really didn't skate very hard back. It kind of looked like Ekblad, but it could have been Colin White. Um... I think Montour and somebody else did make it back, but I was looking at the original person who lost, who lost the, you know, who got beat around center ice. Um, man, there's so many innumerable problems. I can't even be mad. Goaltending was fine. And defensively, it really wasn't even that bad. It's just we couldn't, we just completely got outworked. We got outplayed, got out-efforted. And that's, that's, that's the problem here. Just outworked every puck, every battle Tampa was winning. I, I can't remember one puck battle along the side of the boards where we won the puck, won the battle, and, and went in, into transition. And... And we talked about it on the stream. We, we try to take this run-and-gun team and turn it into this gritty playoff stuff. Well, this sounds good on, on, in theory, but on paper, who? Who are the players that are going to be grinding out against along the walls? The one guy we had in Marchman, we, we, we let him go. Barkoff's not really going to win on yourself. Maybe a couple of board bounds for Hagee. No. Kachuk's in front of the net. All right. Colin White. Mr. Reinen's not that kind of player. You see what I'm saying? We, we don't have the personnel to play the system that Maurice is trying to install. And I'll just say it. Those of you who didn't want to get rid of Bruno and, wanted, and didn't want all these changes, you weren't wrong. And, you know, look, they hired Maurice. It's not like I have a, I have a say in this, right? So they hired him. I was trying to be positive about things. Okay, I did like, I did like what he was saying about you know, but what he was saying and, and it changed because when he had that first press conference, he would say, "I don't really need to change much. Just want to tighten things up, play smarter when we don't have the puck." But then we did the Kachuk trade, and it I I feel like that really changed how he wanted the team to play more than anything else. And I don't regret that. I, I, I don't regret the trade. But I just don't think we have the right coach for the players. And it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. And I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel where we're suddenly going to start winning three and four and five games in a row. Now we might still get the eighth seed because in the Atlantic, Boston, Toronto, Tampa clearly are going to be the top three. Then it's us, Detroit, and Montreal, right? Okay, and we just show we can beat Detroit. So we're, we're liable to get that fourth spot. And you look at, you know, you look at the Metro, we're going to be, you know, maybe the Rangers, Penguins, can the Capitals come up, or the Islanders, they've been slipping a little bit. We're going to be there unless we just completely fall apart. We're going to be there looking at that seventh or eighth spot but if this is what's going to happen in the playoffs, I mean, this is just bad. This is bad all the way around. And, you know, like Stu said, man, it's Jekyll and Hyde team. But tonight, the biggest thing for me, last thing I'll say, is the effort. We gave about eight minutes a really good effort to start the game. We came out flying. And then we looked like shit the rest of the way. And that's, that's, there's two schools of thought there. I'm going to say it's coaching. And then some people are going to say, well, it's not the coach's job. To get the players to play up. And now, I, I, I don't know if I agree with that entirely. I think many ways, the coach only has a job, which is, hey, 
play the way we need you to play where somebody else is going to play. Ah. This is this this point is difficult. Um Stu and I will be back tomorrow morning. And um tomorrow the I forget what time the game starts. I think the game starts at six. The live stream starts a half hour before the Panther game. Somewhere in the third period of the Panther game, the Dolphin game is going to start. We were just we're just going to stream all the way through. We're going to stream both games. That should be fun. Um, appreciate everybody's been coming out for the streams. Uh, we're we're streaming now on not just on YouTube, but we're also live on on Twitter, uh, live on the Facebook group, Flying Fluffy Sports, and I'm probably going to try to go live on Instagram here too soon as well. It's the same stream, obviously, but it's to multiple platforms. Um, and look, I don't know what else to say about this team. It's it's just a mess. We we look we look good, bad, good, bad. It's not even like in between. Meh. We're like we're winning some three two, losing some three two. Some nights we look great, and other nights like tonight. I mean, this team didn't show up tonight. They showed up for eight minutes. I don't know who you blame other than the coaching when the team plays for eight minutes and then plays like that the rest of the day. We blamed it on coaching when we looked like that in the playoffs. Let's put it that way. We blame Brunette for it, so you can't not blame Maurice. And that's it. That's it.